For our message today, I want to talk about the question, Who Needs a Doubting Thomas? The scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and beginning in verse 24. As we've heard already this morning, uh, Jesus appeared to his disciples on that first Easter Sunday, but Thomas was not there. And in this scripture, we learn how Thomas got his nickname, Doubting Thomas. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, uh, reading from verse 24. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have life in his name. Nicknames are interesting. Few people ever choose their own nickname. Usually, other people choose your nickname for you. When I was just a little boy, I had very blonde hair, almost white And so my aunts and uncles called me Cotton Top. No one ever asked me if if I wanted to be called Cotton Top. But I guess they could have called me something worse. So I should be grateful for that. Maybe that's one reason why Twitter is so popular. Because on Twitter, you can choose your own Twitter handle. So... You know, I can choose something cool like Barracuda. Although, I'm kind of late to the game, so I'd probably be like Barracuda 48. But still, you get to choose. And yet, well, now my hair's white again, so I could just be cotton top like I was when I was a kid. This scripture tells us about a disciple of Jesus named Thomas, who had a nickname. His first nickname was the twin. People just called him the twin. We don't know if they asked him if it was okay to call him that. We don't even know if he was a twin or people just decided to give him that nickname. But you probably know him by his other nickname, Doubting Thomas. At some point after the Bible was written, people began to refer to this disciple of Jesus as Doubting Thomas. And we use this name today. Uh, You may hear someone say to people who are skeptical, Don't be a doubting Thomas. Or you may hear someone. Okay, can you hear me now? Thank you. Sorry about that. 
On that first Easter Sunday, Jesus' disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid. They were afraid because Jesus had been killed. And they were afraid that the people who had killed Jesus would be coming after them next. All of a sudden, the Bible says, Jesus came and stood among them in His resurrected, transformed, eternal body. And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. If any group ever needed to hear those words, peace be with you, it was Jesus' disciples. They must have been exhausted by the events of that weekend, traumatized by seeing their teacher and master executed on the cross, and completely confused about what was going on. Finally, they recognized Jesus because He showed them the scars in His hands and in His side that He had received from the cross. We should pause for just a minute and think about those scars. Jesus bears in His resurrected eternal body the scars that He received from sharing the human life that you and I also share. Everything that Jesus experienced as a human being like us has been taken up with Jesus into the life of God. All of our joys, all of our emotions, all of our pains are a part of of who God is because of Jesus. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but we have a high priest in Jesus who was tested like us in every way. So, the Bible says, we can come boldly to His throne of grace. The disciples received that amazing news. And they saw Jesus risen from the dead. But Thomas wasn't there. And so when they reported what they had seen to Thomas, well, you know what he said. I do not believe you. In fact, he went on To say, unless I can touch the scars in his hands and the wound in his side with my own hands, I will not believe. Well, with Thomas, it's sort of like what the police say on those television shows. What you say can and will be used against you. And so... For the rest of history, he has been known by what happened in in one moment. That's not exactly fair. Who of us would like to be remembered for our worst mistake? Most of us have the good fortune of making our mistakes in private. But there are some people who are willing to remind us constantly of our worst mistakes mistakes. Thomas's mistake uh, was, was recorded in Scripture. I have a friend who's a, a college basketball coach. He tells me that uh, he and I have the same job. I teach the Bible. He teaches basketball. But he says some things are different. Uh, no one buys a ticket to see my students take their tests. And no one boos me when they don't pass. Some people's mistakes are more public than others. It was, it was that way with Thomas. And so it's important to give Thomas a little bit of slack. To tell the rest of his story. 
He is more than just a doubting Thomas. What else can we say about this disciple of Jesus, Thomas? Well, for one thing, we know that he didn't believe everything he heard easily. That's not a bad thing. We shouldn't necessarily believe everything that we hear. If you receive an email from a Nigerian prince <laughs> who needs your bank account uh, to collect $10 million, don't give it to them. And have you heard that the post office is going to start charging postage on emails? I've heard that. I've heard that for 20 years. So maybe we don't have to worry about that. As Abraham Lincoln said, don't believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> it can be a good thing not just to easily believe everything that we hear. And, and let's be honest for a minute. The message that the disciples reported to Thomas was a lot to take in. Jesus, whom they had seen executed on a cross, who died and was buried, is alive again. That had never happened before. It was beyond their understanding and beyond their comprehension. If some people like Thomas had a hard time believing it, then the simplest answer is because that's the way it happened. It's an amazing claim beyond our ordinary experience. And many of us are like Thomas. This is hard for us to believe. How can we understand it? The second thing about Thomas that we need to know is that not everyone has the gift of, of easy faith. Some people do, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful gift. In John chapter 20, uh, we read that the disciple whom Jesus loved went to the empty tomb with Peter. And it says, when he saw the empty tomb, he believed. He was a person who had the gift of faith. And that's a wonderful gift, but not everyone can believe easily. And that is okay. Faith is not a race to see who gets there the fastest. Uh, when it comes to faith, the important thing is not when we come to faith, but that we come to faith at all. That's the most important thing. And Thomas is a person who reminds us of that truth. We also see from the Bible that Thomas was a person who was very honest. If you didn't want to know what Thomas thought, don't ask him. There was a time in John chapter 14 when Jesus said to the disciples, you know the place that I'm going and you know the way. Well, there was an awkward pause. No one knew what Jesus was talking about. But it was Thomas who said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? He said the question that everyone else was thinking. And because he was willing to be honest and ask that question, Jesus gave that wonderful promise. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Thomas was willing to say what everyone else thought. We also know that Thomas was a person who 
may have been slow to trust people, but when he did trust them, he trusted them all the way. In John chapter 11, Jesus was responding to the message that his friend Lazarus was sick. Lazarus lived in the land of Judea, and the last time Jesus had been there, people in Judea had threatened to kill Jesus. And so some of the disciples were saying, Lord, how can you go there? The last time you were there, they tried to kill you. But Thomas, in chapter 11, said, Lord, let us go with you, and we will die there with you. If all we knew about Thomas was what we read in chapter 11, his nickname might be Faithful Thomas. He might have been slow to trust, but once he trusted, he trusted completely. Throughout history, Christians have been blessed by followers of Jesus who were slow to accept the faith of who Jesus is. But once they did, they made an incredible impact. Uh, first of all, in the Bible, the Apostle Paul, when he first heard about the message of Jesus, tried his best to stomp it out. He persecuted the church. But then Jesus appeared to Paul, and Paul became the greatest missionary in Christian history. Another person like this was St. Augustine. As a young person, he rejected the Christian faith of his mother. He became a follower of the philosophy of Manichaeism. And he lived a very self-centered and pleasure-seeking lifestyle. When he did hear about the message of Christ, he said that once he prayed, Lord, make me a chaste person, but not yet. He wasn't ready to give up the pleasures that he had found. When he was convinced that Christ was the way, the truth, and the life, he still hesitated until one day he was convinced to give his life to Christ by hearing Scripture read from, of all people, the Apostle Paul. St. Augustine went on to become the most important preacher and thinker in the ancient world. Many of us have read books about Christ by C.S. Lewis. What many do not know is that as a young person, C.S. Lewis had a strong distaste for Christianity. He thought that Christians were ignorant and naive, and those were some of the nicer things he had to say about Christians. As a student and teacher of English literature, another thing that irritated C.S. Lewis about Christianity is that some of the writers and poets that he most admired had the annoying characteristic of being Christians. And then one day, he allowed himself to wonder if their writings were so true and so beautiful, not in spite of their Christian faith, but because of their Christian faith. As he allowed this idea to fill his mind, he realized that the Jesus that he was seeking was at the same time seeking him. He said he prayed a prayer of faith and then went to bed that night the saddest Christian in all of England. But finally convinced that Jesus was the true and living way to God. Sometimes it's been the people who have come to faith from the greatest distance who've made the biggest splash. 
it is in many ways a comfort and a source of confidence that one of the people chosen by Jesus was a person like Thomas who didn't believe just anything that he heard. In John chapter 20, we read that Jesus appeared to Thomas and that Jesus sought him out to be one of his eyewitnesses. Jesus showed Thomas the scars on his hands and the wound in his side. And you may say, well, Thomas is different. He was allowed to see Jesus. Jesus forced him to believe by appearing to him. But I think that would be wrong. Jesus showed Thomas the scars that he received from dying on the cross. And Jesus received those scars because he refused to force anyone to believe in him. When Thomas saw Jesus, he responded with a great confession of faith. He said, My Lord and my God. Believing in Jesus for Thomas was not just believing that something is true. It was believing enough to trust his entire life to Jesus. The scars that Jesus received on the cross said to Thomas that Jesus' kind of life is the kind of life that God approves of. By raising Jesus from the dead, something that had not happened to anyone else, Thomas understood that Jesus' way of life was the truest and best way of life. And Thomas was convinced to live that way himself. So Thomas has another nickname. Not just the twin. Not just Doubting Thomas. He's also called Thomas the Apostle. One of the eyewitness missionaries for Christ. Our faith is based on the testimony of people like Thomas. And it should give us confidence to believe because Jesus chose as his apostle someone like Thomas with honest doubts who would only commit himself to one that he knew to be true. When Thomas made his confession. Jesus pronounced a blessing. But he didn't pronounce a blessing on Thomas. He pronounced a blessing on all who believed without seeing. He said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. Did you know that you are mentioned in the Bible? If you believe in Jesus because of the testimony of someone like Thomas, Jesus' blessing is for you. Jesus also gave an invitation to Thomas. Stop doubting and start believing. It was an invitation. It wasn't a command. Jesus went to the cross rather than force people to believe in him. But he did, does give this invitation. Stop doubting 
and believe. We can do that because of the testimony of people like Thomas. And we can do that because of the people that Jesus talked about and Jesus blessed who have not seen but still believe. This blessing and this invitation is for each one of us. What will we do with the invitation of Jesus?